What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am sorry, sorry, I am sorry. I made part one of this video back in March. Um, uh, uh, took me nine months to finish this video. Took me nine months to get this rifle built and show you guys I am sorry. No excuses, I'm busy, I'm forgetful, I have no excuses, but I recently realized I have the best gunsmith in the state of Rhode Island working for me at Roscoe Manufacturing. Yes, I am lucky enough to work at Roscoe Manufacturing. I am the sales and marketing manager there and we make a damn good affordable barrel. So I bribed my gunsmith. His name is Rich, AKA The Reacher on Instagram, AKA Grandma. I bribed him to stay late one day. It cost me a case of Truly and a bag of gummy bears but I bribed him to stay late and get this build out for me and I'm very thankful that he did. So this video is not about how to build an AR-15. YouTube does not like that and I don't wanna get my channel deleted. Plus there's a bunch of videos already on YouTube on how to do that. This video, we're gonna talk about the receiver set I went with, why I went with it, the accessories, and what I did to finish this rifle out and why I went with those, the future plans for this gun. More important though, I want to hear your thoughts. I want to hear your opinions. What do you like? What do you don't like? What would you have done differently? Keep it positive. Keep it positive, please. But I always like to hear different folks' opinions. All right, receiver set. I went with a Geisley receiver set. This is mostly a Geisley build. A lot of Geisley stuff in this gun. I wanted a good mid-tier receiver set. Something that's going to get shot a lot. Something I'm not going to mind beating up. Um, but something that I, I'm confident that's going to be good quality and last for a long time that I'm not going to have problems with. I'll jump ahead a little, but this is going to be my night vision gun once I test it and I'm confident in it. So I wanted something good that I could still beat the crap out of. The handguard is also Geisley. It's an MK18 rail. I went with this one again because the lockup is good. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. And uh, again, I wanted a solid lockup between the handguard and the upper. Like I mentioned a second ago, this is going to be my night vision gun. So once I'm put several hundred rounds through it and I'm confident, we're gonna throw my maul on here. We're gonna throw my light from Arasaka on here. We're gonna get rid of this hollow sun and put my Aimpoint T2 on here. Um, and this will be my main night vision gun that I will have set up eventually. Um, I do love these cloud lights. Cloud lights are great. They are the best, brightest, most durable white light out there. They don't play well with a lot of um, laser aiming devices out there like them all. They don't fit very well. The uh, pressure pad uh, is um, proprietary to them. Even though it's cool, it works well, it's unique. It's proprietary. You can't put anything else on there. With a short barrel and shorter handguard, I want a smaller pressure pad, and that's why I'm swapping out the cloud light, even though the cloud light is great. All right, let's start at the back, I guess, and work our way forward. SB Tactical Brace, pretty straightforward. They're still legal, so they're still legal, so why not? And I have a uh, sling from Blue Force Gear. I had it laying around that's padded. It's nice, it's comfy, and that's what I went with. Uh, the buffer tube is from Forward Controls. You will see there is a ton of stuff on this gun from Forward Controls. I don't know. I went a little crazy with the forward controls. It has a lower tactical folder. You know, who doesn't like a little shorty boy, little foldy boy once in a while? So I went with that. Your buffer tube, if I didn't say it, is, I think I said it. Did I say it? It's forward controls. I don't know. And then pretty much all of the smaller parts on here are, are also from forward controls. So your safety is a short throw forward control safety, your bolt, uh, bolt stop, bolt release uh, is uh, forward controls as well. Mag release, charging handle, uh, then the charging, uh, the dust cover. Wow, excuse me. Bad brain fart today. It is a double dimple uh, dust cover, and I don't know. Why not? Why not? It looks good. Got the little duck. Makes me happy. That's all that matters. The trigger is a Geisley trigger. Uh, pretty much Geisley and forward controls on the whole gun. It is the SDE trigger. I think they're nice. They're crisp. They're short. I love the fat flat. Face. I have no complaints. The trigger is great. Uh, your optic riser is from Unity. It's one of those 82 foot riser mounts. It's very, very high, obviously. The reason I did that is once again, this will be my night vision gun, so I want something up higher so it's easier to, to shoot passively through the red dot. Um, so that's why I went with this Unity. I'm a big fan of these, and again, I will put an A.2 on here. 
when this gun is ready for the big time. This is a sentry strap from Neomag. It uh, allows you to store your uh, sling out of the way, uh, attached to the rifle, so it doesn't get snagged on anything until you need it. You just give it a quick tug, it's held in place by magnets, and then it pulls out of the way when you are done with it. I think the last thing besides the bolt and BCG is the muzzle device. Now, once again, this muzzle device is a temporary fix. This is a primary arms and forward controls collaboration. It's a great muzzle device. It's a chemo for quick detach of a suppressor, but not ideal for an 11 and a half inch gun that's gonna be a night vision gun. The ports on the side are huge. So it does eat up a lot of that felt recoil, but it's loud and the flash is enormous. So again, night vision, big flashes, not great. I ordered a Surefire three prong. It was supposed to be in like a week ago and it hasn't come in yet. It's lost in transit in USPS world. When that comes in, I will swap out um, that muzzle device. All right, bolt, uh, BCG and barrel. So the BCG that's gonna be, gonna be in there is the new BCG from Law Tactical. It's the called the a-R-I-C, I don't know how to say it, doesn't matter. But what this BCG allows you to do is to fire your rifle with the stock closed. You can never, with Law Tactical, fire it with the, the stock or brace, in this case, closed. And this BCG will allow me to do so. Right now, I have a very nice Roscoe Manufacturing Foss and Chrome BCG in there. That is a great BCG. That would be the BCG that would stay in there if I didn't have the Law Tactical folder and if I didn't if I didn't want to try the ARIC BCG in there to see how well the uh, how well it works. I will absolutely do a dedicated review on there once I tested a whole bunch. I wanted to put the Roscoe one in here. It's a new rifle. I wanted to get it broken in. I want to make sure everything ran well before I put something brand new that I don't know a ton about in there. So that's why the first couple hundred rounds was the Roscoe BCG. Now, the Law Tactical BCG, couple things. Read the manual. I've talked to the guys at Law Tactical. Trust me, it's not hard, but read the damn manual. There's two different versions. There's an M and a C. I believe the M is the one you use if you're shooting suppressed, and then you can shoot 5.56 unsuppressed, and then the C works with either 2.23, 5.56, or 300 black unsuppressed, but you can't shoot the C suppressed. Either way, it's not hard. Read the manual, and you'll be good to go. Um, the barrel. Now, keep in mind again, I do work for Roscoe Manufacturing. Maybe I am a little biased, but it biased. It is truly a great, great barrel. So this is the K9 11 and a half inch barrel uh, that we partnered with Kinetic Consulting, Cookie Monster, Mocha Bear, Duffy. If you know him, you know what I'm talking about. One of the best instructors in the firearms industry. He is a great instructor. On the bottom of the barrel, it has a little cookie. The first hundred, he loves cookies. This is his signature barrel. So the first hundred, we put a cookie down there and I was lucky enough to get one of those cookies. Obviously I work there, it shouldn't be too hard. But the K9 series, these 11 and a half and 12 and a half inch barrels have several unique features. One, it's a continuous taper profile. So down here near the chamber, it's much fatter. And as it goes out to the muzzle, it gets a little thinner. Um, not pencil barrel thin at all, it's still pretty beefy. Uh, the reason that's significant is we all put a ton of lights and lasers and cool guy gear out on the end of the muzzle and having the chamber end a little bit more beefy uh, balances the gun a little bit better. Also having that beefy barrel is when this barrel heats up and I'm mag dumping into trash, I'm not gonna lose my point of aim, point of impact. With really thin barrels, like pencil barrels, when you shoot them, they do this. And when they get heat, heated up, it goes from like one, two MOA to like six MOA. Pencil barrels have a purpose. I'm not talking smack about your pencil barrel, but for a duty type barrel, I want something with a little bit more girth to stay accurate when the barrel heats up. Uh, another unique thing, it's made from 416, 416 stainless. Stainless barrels have the ability to be a lot more accurate than a 4150 barrel. That's just the way stainless is, but the stainless barrel has a black nitrite finish. So, 4150 barrels typically have a longer life, longer longevity, where the stainless don't have quite as long of a, uh, of a life. By black nitriting it, that protects the barrel and you get a much longer life, just about just as good as 4150, but you still get the accuracy benefits of 416 stainless. You get your cookie and eat it too. Best of both worlds. The last thing I want to talk about on the barrel is going to be the gas system. We call it the patrol length gas system. So. Most 11.5 barrels have a carbine length gas system, which is good, nothing wrong with it, very reliable. Not the softest shooting, but it's been around for a long time and it's very reliable. Some other companies have done a mid-length 
11, 5, and 12, 5. That can be a little bit harder. A lot of times you can only shoot them un, uh, shoot them suppressed. If you want to shoot them unsuppressed, your gas port has to be like that big and then they don't shoot nice and defeats the purpose of going mid-length on an 11.5 or a 12.5. So what we did with the patrol length gas systems, we went right in between. It's a little bit longer than carbine, a little bit shorter than mid-length, and again, it's kind of the best of both worlds. You can have your cookie and eat it too, and everyone's happy. It does a couple things. One, it, it still is a significantly softer shooting gun than a carbine length 11.5. If you shot this, right next to a carbine uh, gas system 11.5 this feels the felt recoil is significantly less you can also shoot it suppressed and unsuppressed where again those mid-length 11.5s and those mid-length 12.5s very very difficult to do that this one best of both worlds you can shoot suppressed still very very flat so that is my spiel this is my new rifle i can't wait to continue testing it couple hundred rounds so far so good very soon i'm going to throw that law tactical uh, BCG in there and we'll see how that runs but once again I want to hear from you what do you like what do you not like what would you have done different again keep it positive because I will delete your ignorant ass comment so fast it's okay if we disagree on equipment and gear it's okay if we disagree on tactics it's a free world you do you I do me and everything is all good who do I need to thank before you go all right so primary arms hooked me up with the uh, Geisley receiver set, the Geisley rail, and almost all of the Ford control accessories on here. And that was very, very nice of them. I want to thank Roscoe for making a badass, affordable, accurate. I want every single person in the world to shoot these canine barrels because if you do, you will appreciate them as much as I do. And then you'll buy one and I'm in sales and I want you to buy one. <laughs> I want to thank my coworker, my employee, grandmama uh, for building this rifle he's better at it he can do it faster and better than i can so i'm gonna make him build all my rifles from now on he doesn't know it yet but it only co cost me a case of truly so it's worth it my back hurts if you're wondering what i'm doing my back is killing me um i also need to thank brownells let me not forget brownells they sent me not only the law tactical folder that's on this gun but also this new law tactical bcg and i cannot wait to start using that i hope it works as well as I expected to, as it should. I'm very, very excited for that. Who else do I need to thank? TriStar Trading Company. I got a lot of people to thank today. I'm almost done, don't go. TriStar Trading handles my apparel, my shirts, my patches. Great people, softest t-shirts in the game. It fits so well. Link is down there with a whole bunch of affiliate links down there as well. If you need anything, you want anything, go check it out. I will put links to as much of this stuff as I can down in the video description and i want to thank you for watching especially the last two minutes i've just been rambling on and thanking everybody so thank you for watching i love you i will see you next time like comment subscribe enable the bell notifications if you do that i'll thank you again and like you even more <laughs> see you next time